Heavenly Father, help me with this message. Holy Spirit, that you would just be with me and among the hearts of all the people watching this. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, this video is about health. I had somebody message me and say, listen, would you address this topic? And um, I feel inadequate to the task. Many people, uh, smarter people, better theologians than me, um, have taken this on and have come to different conclusions. So I tell you to take everything that I say back to the Word of God and ask God for truth and reality in it. But I'm going to dispel some of the lies I think that people, um, Christians themselves, think about health. <clears throat> um, and actually some of them are heresies. But we'll get to that. So first of all, um, what is hell? And there are several words that they use for hell in the Bible. Um, Gehenna, Hades, Tartarus, there are um, allusions to it. Um, the lies that are told about hell, I, I don't understand how people can get them because the words of Jesus, the, the number one teacher about hell was Jesus Christ. I mean, he talks about the punishment for sinners and that it is eternal all throughout his ministry. So um, we're going to, I'm going to read Matthew chapter 25, part, parts of it in a bit, um, but that is one of the most compelling places that, that hell is discussed by Jesus himself. Um, the idea that universalism, which is anybody gets to heaven, everyone gets to heaven, um, and the, um, the theology of annihil annihilationism, annihilation, annihilation, which is when you die, if you don't believe in God, you cease to exist. Those are false, wrong, not going to happen. Um, you are an eternal being, not eternal. Yeah, everlasting means you've been around forever. God is everlasting. No, God is eternal. He's been there since before we were here and he will always be there even after everything. God will be Eternal means that once you've been created, you remain alive. So the death of our physical bodies is not the end of us. It is the end of our time in this physical world, in the dimensions that we currently live in. <clears throat> Annihilation is a lie. People who die, who have no faith or belief in Jesus Christ, are in a place separated from God. Um, it is a real place. And while God is omnipresent and he can't not be near hell, you are separated from him eternally. Um, hell was originally created for fallen angels. It was not created for humanity. Mankind was not meant to be there. Um, and that verse is in Matthew chapter, uh, chapter 25, verse 21. Um, it is an everlasting place. Heaven and hell are everlasting. They do not end. Jesus says that himself in Matthew chapter 25, verse uh, 46. Uh, also, Mark 16, 16 has some compelling verses on that. Um, it's a place of suffering with different levels. Um, not all sin is equal. That's another lie told among the church. Not all sin is equal. In 1 John chapter 5, you can read about how some sins lead to death and other sins don't. Uh, but the truth is that all sin left unmanaged will lead to death. It's like weeds growing in a garden. If you are a, a plant that is producing fruit or producing things for other people to eat or producing good things and you allow weeds to grow up in your garden, eventually the weeds will choke the plant and there will be no fruit. Um, but there are differing levels in hell. Uh, you have a body and you will feel pain. I don't know if you've ever, I, I dream very vividly, especially a um, long time ago, but I can, I, I could, I can feel, I can smell, I can, uh, I haven't tasted yet in my, no, I have, I can taste in my dreams. Um, you will have a resurrected body, whether you are a believer or an unbeliever. And the scriptures for that um, in John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29, and Acts chapter 24, verse 15 also another one good one to look at is matthew 18 28 and luke 16 19 but i'm going to go and read um real quick acts chapter 4 verse uh, acts chapter 24 verse 15 if you want to get there um because that's the most compelling place where it says that you will 
here. Having the same hope in God, which these themselves hold and look for, that there is to be a resurrection, both of the unrighteous and the righteous, the just and the unjust. Everybody gets resurrected and gets a new body. The problem is then there's judgment and separation again. Um, so you will have a body and you will feel pain. Um, Jesus is the most prolific teacher about hell. If you don't know that, go back and read all of Jesus' stuff, especially in the parables. The weeping and gnashing of teeth, being thrown into outer darkness, um, even believers being given their portion among the unbelievers. That is talking about believers that are not looking for Jesus to come back, and they will be given their portion along with the unbelievers. Read into that. Like that's that's exactly what he means. He's not mincing words there. He is he's he's telling us that even believers need to be wary, need to be um, vigilant, need to be faithful, need to be ex expectant of Jesus's return. Our lives should reflect um, <clears throat> not only that Jesus is alive and alive in us, but also that we expect him to come back at any moment. Um, God doesn't put you there. People are like, I can't believe in a loving God that would put me in hell. Well, God doesn't put you there. There is all the evidence, there's every there's every evidence in the world for you to come to the conclusion that there is a God and then to either deny or accept him. And people that have denied him for whatever reason have done so of their own free will. Um, and I have heard testimonies of people um, who have had out-of-body experiences, near-death experiences, things like that, who have experienced parts of hell, remembered something from their past about Jesus, prayed and were rescued from it, but then they were also brought back to life, um, clearly, because they're here to tell the story. So I don't, you know, if their physical body has not passed away. I'm not here to mince words about that. I don't really know all the answers. All I know is that it is so important for Christians to talk to people about Jesus because we have to have an adequate and real belief of hell. If hell does not exist, then our need to evangelize and to tell people about Jesus and the good news of the gospel is null and void. If everyone gets to hell, uh, if everyone gets to heaven without Jesus, then why talk about him? If everyone gets to heaven w without God, without the sacrifice of, of Jesus, then what does it matter if I'm on here talking about these videos? The reason I do this is because everyone you see is eternal. You are an eternal person. Everyone you meet today is an eternal person. And what happens to them after this physical body passes away is a result of what did they hear? Did they hear truth? Did they seek truth for themselves? Did they find Jesus? Like that is, that is a real concern for me because I truly believe what Jesus says about hell in the Bible. And if you believe that, you will want everybody you meet to not go there. And it's, this, is, this is not an attempt to like throw hell down somebody's throat. Like I'm, I'm not pointing fingers. I don't get to choose who goes there. That's, that's not on me. My job is to tell you that there's a Jesus, that there's a gospel, that there's a good news, that there's atonement for your sin, that there's redemption for us, all of us fallen people, every single one of us fallen people, because nobody has done it except for Jesus. Nobody walked this life perfectly except for Jesus. And then he laid it down so that we can be back with the Father. Real glad about that. Real grateful, thank you, Jesus. But that's the good news, people. And if we don't tell people that, there is no incentive, there's no need for me to talk about Jesus, even when it makes other people uncomfortable, even when it makes me uncomfortable. There's no need for me to do it if you can get to God some other way. That's just, that's just the, the, the fact of the matter. That's why Christians need to be so concerned uh, about being unashamed of their faith and being willing to say things in, in love um, and, and in truth to others. Um, the, the other thing I want to tell you is, uh, let's, let's read a part of Matthew 25, 41, because from what I understand, um, based on John 15 and based on Matthew 25, there will be people who believe in Jesus that go to hell. And, and, I, and when I say that, I mean, people who understand who Jesus is, e you know, even fallen angels and de demons know who Jesus is. They know that he's the son of God and they believe that he's the son of God. And yet they are not redeemed. Redemption and knowing who Jesus is are two different things. Relationship 
and knowing who someone is, is are two separate things. Um, the first thing in Matthew 20, read the whole chapter of Matthew 25 and ask God and the Holy Spirit to tell him what he wants to tell you about hell. Um, but Matthew chapter 25 starts out with the parable of the bridegroom um, and the 10 virgins. And they're, you know, you've heard the story with the lamps and they're making their lamps ready. They've got to have enough oil. They're trimming the wicks. He's coming at a very late hour. And, uh, and only five of them are ready. The other five have to turn back to get more oil. And what he says to the other five, now these, these are part of the wedding party. This is, this is a metaphor for the church. Five of them are ready and they go in with the bridegroom because they have enough oil, which is representative of the Holy Spirit, symbolic. The other five are not ready. And what he says to them is, uh, in verse 12, Matthew 25, verse 12, but he replied, I solemnly declare to you, I do not know you. And then Jesus says, watch, give strict attention for you know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man will come. He's talking to believers. This is not an unbeliever word right here. Um, in Matthew chapter 25, verse uh, 30, he's talking, this, this next is the parable about the talents. And he gives someone this much and someone this much. And everyone stewards what they've been given except one. And they just bury it. And they're like, here, here's, here's what you gave me. I'm giving it back to you. And he's not happy with that either. Um, and in verse 30, he says to the one who had one talent and throw the good for nothing servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's a metaphor in John 15. It also says that he's going to cut branches, that God, the Father, is going to cut entire branches, not prune the branch because that makes a, a particular branch, which is us, better and more fruitful. He's going to cut the whole branch off and it'll wither and die and be good for nothing but to be thrown in the fire. Weeping and grinding of teeth. And then in verse 41, Then he will say to those at his left hand, be gone from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Fire that's going to last for just a little while? No, the eternal fire. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me and entertain me. I was naked and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not visit me with help and ministering care. Then they also in their turn will answer, Lord, when did we see you? doing all those things. He said, when you did it for the least of these, you failed to do it for me. When you failed to do it for the least of these, you failed to do it for me. And then the last verse, verse 46, then they will go away into eternal punishment. These are the words of Jesus, people. But those who are just and upright in the right standing with God into eternal life. So if you're asking, look, you should have a healthy fear of God. If you do not have a healthy fear of God, you are not reading your Bible correctly because I read my Bible all the time and I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> holy moly thank you so much for the fact that even the things i did today here you know i'm not even sure what else i did here's what i know i did let me just throw up there all the other ways that i failed today thank you so much that i don't have to live with condemnation and fear thank you so much that that all i have to do is confess to you and ask you to make me better and ask you to help me for tomorrow uh, because your grace is enough but it is not an excuse for me to continue living in a way where uh, i i purposefully mess up it is a moment for me to repent there's a lack of repentance um, or even teaching about repentance people don't teach on repentance it is a necessary daily thing like you need to be doing that because of the fear of the lord jesus is amazing and his love is beyond anything that we know but the fear of the lord is real and you need to have it if you don't already um a healthy fear of the Lord is, is very good for all of us. There was one more thing that I wanted to mention um, is, is the concept of time. Hell has no time. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post um, below a, a couple videos I watched that were just really compelling, very interesting. 23 Minutes in Hell by Bill Weiss. Um, and then there was another um, college professor who was an atheist, and he had one of those near-death experiences. And it was just very interesting um, to listen to. But the, ta the, the concept of time 
is non-existent after this body. Like the, the dimensions that we experience here are limitations on our spirit. Our physical body is a limitation for our spirit. It is a training ground for our spirit, but it is a limitation. And once we are freed from this physical body, we are no longer constrained by the dimensions we currently live in. You will be another, it, it, it's just, it's outside of all that. It's outside of space and time. A moment is eternal. There's, there's no real value on time. Um, anybody who's ever had a spiritual experience, and I've, I've had one that I can say was genuinely, oh my gosh, I don't even really know what happened and I don't know how to explain it. But, but moments are different. It's, it's just a different thing to have a moment in the spirit than it is to have a moment. Like I could, I could give you a time estimate, 15 minutes, 30 minutes on that. Oh, it took us four hours to drive to so-and-so. That's not the way that heaven and hell is. One moment is eternal. There's no such thing as time. It's just all comprehensive. Jesus spoke more about hell than about heaven. And I, I really ask you to, to not listen to me, but to read your Bible. Even just read what Jesus says. Read the parables about when he's talking about separating believers from unbelievers and where they go and what, what you can experience there. Um, and ask God for, for, for help and wisdom and understanding. And I'm going to end it now because we're at 16 minutes and um, y'all don't even like to listen to me that long, I know. Uh, but I thank you, God, for this moment. I ask that any words of truth would fall upon uh, ready, willing, and able hearts. Um, and that anything I said that was not true or outside your will would just fall on dead ears. And I thank you, God, um, for all the people watching this video. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day.